Cutting tests. What role do they play in the workshop with your laser? Stick around to find out. Hey everybody, my name is Sam. Welcome back to the workshop. Today's video is going to be short, but it's all about the cutting test. Specifically the one that I've designed and sell, but could also apply to others if you already have them or make them yourselves. It'll answer the question of what a cutting test is for, when to use it, and how to read them. To answer that first question, what is a cutting test for? A cutting test file is for letting you know how your machine can or cannot cut through a certain material. It is a file that you run most commonly on Lightburn, which is the industry standard program for use with lasers. And it is something that will give you a basic scale of power and speed and allow you to interpret your, find your sweet spot for your laser and material that you want to cut. Second question is when to use a cutting test. Honestly, I run my cutting test anytime I have new material, different thickness materials, or different lots or manufacturers of the material. Things are going to change. We're dealing with wood, most commonly with wood, and that is a natural substance that changes in densities and composition, especially internally. I find that running a cutting test, especially a small one such as this, does not use a whole lot of material, but does give me the comfort and information I need to not waste the material that I've just purchased and turn it into customer items to sell. So in my case, I use cutting tests all the time. So with those questions answered, let's jump on over into Lightburn. I want to show you guys the file, show you how to open it, talk about a little bit of design concepts, how the file is actually programmed in case you want to watch this and make your own, and otherwise educate you on the file so you can understand what's really happening behind the colors and design. I'm going to go ahead and record my computer screen here and walk you guys through the process within Lightburn, within the application, and let's go ahead and get this cut file loaded so we can test it out on some new material. So we're going to launch Lightburn and open up our laser file. At the same time, you want to make sure your laser is on and connected to your Lightburn program. If need to, go over here to the right, select your laser, and make sure you've got the correct COM port listed as well. I always like to also home my machine and listen that it does respond, and that way I know it's connected. Because sometimes, if you're connected to one laser, you do some editing work, then you connect to the laser you want to use, it'll flip the text around or do something weird. So first things first, connect to your laser. As I scroll in here and we can see the actual cut test, we have several different layers. Everything over here to the right is labeled as logically as I could do it. If I right click on a layer, it will flash on the screen where that layer is. So here I can see that the black layer is all of my labels. It's my text, it's my lines, it's everything of the sort. The green layer, is my three millimeter per second speed. Yellow is four millimeter. Orange is five. Teal is six. And pink is seven. The last layer is the actual cutout because I like to kind of cut out the cards and make them look nice. And that is the blue line that goes around the border. In case you're not familiar, I want to go through a little bit of how this file is programmed and how you can actually get the different scales and power ratings within Lightburn. At first glance, it looks like, okay, the 3 is at that speed and that power rating, the 4 is at that speed and power rating, and I see no differences in power over here. Everything says 100%. Well, the secret is in selecting the shapes. We'll actually just pick on one here. When you select the shape, you can go over to a tab, which is hidden, so I'm going to show you how to unhide it. I'm going to right click up here on the orange bar, and I'm going to choose Shape Properties. That adds another tab here, and when I click on it, I now see power scale. Power scale is 10. This is how this particular shape, even though it's in the layer at 3 millimeters per second, and it says it's 100% power, it is going to do this one particular shape at 10% of the power chosen. So, 10% of 100 is 10. The same thing for here, if I select that one, power scale of 20. This one, power scale of 30 and so forth. Now one thing to note about the power scale, if your laser has certain ranges that it will operate or not operate at, you want to make sure the power scale is within that range. For example, my CO2 laser doesn't do anything at 20% or below, so having a cut test at 10 and 20% is pretty useless. So with this file I've gone through and in all these vertical columns, the green, the yellow, orange, teal, and pink, these are all set to a power scale of 10. Move over, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, and there you go. 
So that's a look at how the layers are programmed individually. This also should probably demystify a lot of the how do cutting tests actually work and let you guys know it's not that complicated. A lot of the times you'll see cut tests out there for free and there's definitely a lot of those out there. This is one that I designed. I like the hexagon shapes. I like to add the additional angles. It'll let me see how the laser and power settings adjust with multiple angles. And then I wanted to kind of make it unique. That way I know if it's my design or not, if I ever see in the internet. And so hexagons offset a little bit, that's mine. Outside of the design styles that I've chosen with this, you don't have to do anything fancy. You don't have to have text, you don't have to have labels. It's just a matter of running it at certain intervals, certain power scales to find out what works for you and your machine. On this particular test, you wanna make sure you start from is your user origin, unless you place the piece right at your home position. What you're gonna see me do is take a scrap piece of wood that I have in the shop. I'm gonna put it over on my machine. I'm gonna move the laser to it, and that's gonna be my origin. That's why I've chosen user origin in this case. Just know that that might be something you wanna tweak depending on how you wanna lay it out and how you have your laser set up. At this point, the next thing for me to do is just to preview up here. I wanna make sure that everything looks correct, that it actually is going to cut and engrave everything like I see. And as you can also tell, I've chosen to just do outline on the text. My next step is to go over to my machine, bring my laser to the position I want, set the origin, get everything going, and then run this test. All right, I have a scrap sheet of walnut three millimeter thick plywood. I'm going to go ahead and go into Lightburn and tell my laser to move to the origin point. It should be saved somewhere around here. So let's go ahead and move it there. And then at this point, I'm just going to move my piece with this X tool. It has the laser crosshairs and put it roughly in a spot that I'm okay with. I want to make sure I don't waste too much of this plywood. So I'll put it pretty close to the edge there. And now my next step is to tell the machine to frame out this job. I want to make sure it's within the area of the wood that I want to cut and it doesn't run off the edges or anything. I'm going to move this over to the left just a little bit, about that far, because I'm going to put some little hold down clamps in here on my honeycomb board. So let's run that framing again. That looks really good. All right, here's a look at the hold down clamps that I'm going to be using. I'll include these with this cut test file if you're buying my file. These are made for the X-Tool honeycomb, so you might need to adjust the thickness of this part if it doesn't fit or is too small for your honeycomb bed. But I'll at least give these guys to use too. These simply just go in the honeycomb bed and kind of push down. It acts very similarly to a hold fast from an old style woodworking bench and that friction holds it in place. I'm gonna kind of angle these right outside of that line and do one last framing to make sure I'm not gonna hit my hold downs. That looks good. Now the thing that I would do at this point is go ahead and focus my laser as well. I already have this done. I've already been cutting some three millimeter plywood, so I'm not gonna adjust the focus, but this is the point when you would do that. All right guys, at this point, my material is on my laser. My laser head is focused. It is clamped down with my little hold fast. I have framed my job and everything looks good. It is time for me to close up my enclosure, turn on my air assist, turn on my exhaust fan, and then click start in Lightburn. Obviously, I'm gonna do this a little bit different since I'm videoing it. I leave this front hatch open, but normally you don't do that. So real life that took about eight minutes to run, maybe just a little bit over. 
but definitely not as long as nine minutes. So this is not a very long job to run. As we can see, we were successful, at least with our cutout or on the profile. And if I pick the board up, give it a few light taps, that's all I like to do. I don't like to beat it to death. I don't like to beat the devil out of it, as Bob Ross would say, because I want to know what are realistic fall through, fall out cuts on this machine with this material. Looking at it here, it looks like my engraving setting could stand to be a little bit darker if I want some really nice looking results on camera. But honestly, in real life, I can still read this. I know what it is, I know what it says, and I know the settings. So running it at 200 millimeters a second, 80% power, Maybe if I slowed it down to 150 millimeters per second, 80% power, it would be fine. But it's still usable, I can still read it. The purpose of this are the hexagon cutouts, not the labels. Now let's talk about how to interpret the cutting test. Obviously, the easiest thing to do is to look and see where there are holes and say, you know what, there we go, we're good enough. Something else you want to look at is the back of your cut piece. Look for any kind of score lines. See where it was very close to cutting through. Also look and see if you have a lot of charring. Up here at the top where it was running seven millimeters a second, 80%, 90% power, there's a lot of charring. There's also a lot of really dark cuts down at the bottom where it was a lot slower. The other way to interpret the cutting test is to look at it from the profile. What I mean is look at the actual layers of the wood. Take a look and see how dark it is. You don't want this to be black as midnight. That means you're cutting too slow or with too much power for the material. You also want to obviously be able to cut through the material. The happy medium is something kind of a light brown. You can still kind of see a little bit of the wood layers and it's just not all black. The profile for this cut job is too slow and too powerful for just three millimeter plywood. But I wanted to make sure that it got cut out completely and not knowing exactly what the settings would be, five millimeters a second, 100% power was a safe bet for three millimeter thickness. So looking at this, I can say that with this particular material, I can run as fast as seven millimeters per second and as low powered as 60%. I'll probably choose seven millimeters per second at 80% power. I don't like to run my laser full bore all the way high power, and I don't always like to choose the lowest setting. You're gonna run into hidden variations, glue lines, filler knots, or other kind of things in your material. So choosing the lowest power setting is not usually a good idea. Pulling from my stack, my literal stack of the exact same cutting test on different materials, you can see that I like to keep these. As you are doing your laser engravings and you're working through different materials, different jobs, unless you have a memory that's fantastic, you will not remember what speed, what setting, and what was best for the different materials. That's why I always make my cutting tests with cutouts. That way you can have them in your shop, look at them, and keep them on hand. One other thing I always like to do, in my case, is label the back with the machine. So in this case, this is from the X-Tool D1, the 20 watt and then also say what it is. This is a three millimeter Baltic birch. This is three millimeter maple, walnut, babinga, and so forth. These always stay next to the laser. These are my reference sheets. Think of it as uh, interior designers, paint swatch color wheels and all that. This is my version of that. This allows me to pick a material and say, hmm, I'd like to use three millimeter walnut. All right, with the X tool, I can run it at this speed, this percent power, we're good to go. That's very, very handy. That is important because that allows me to not waste material, yet be as efficient and effective in my workshop as I can. There you go, guys. That is the quick and easy way to use my cutting test. This probably also applies to other cutting tests you may find out there, but I can't say for sure. I didn't design those. This test is available for sale on my website, on my Etsy store. I think there's even going to be a link below a YouTube video where you can buy it through Spring, the like Spring merch store and all that. I'll go ahead and let you know the cheapest place you're going to find it is on my website. I don't pay any extra seller fees or commission fees, so I can give the lowest price there. But I understand some people only like to shop different areas, and that's why you find it listed in other places. Hopefully you found this informational and it's helpful. This is going to help you get your cutting file going, rocking and rolling. You can learn your material and your speed settings with your individual laser and start making some stuff. If you guys have any questions or comments, leave a comment down below, or feel free to reply to your email from your order. I am there. I will answer them as quick as I can, and I'll help to make sure you have a good experience. Appreciate you guys watching as always. Take care, and I'll see you next time in the workshop.